This week's word of the week is acetylene. Acetylene is a gas usually used in the cutting and welding processes. This is the chemical formula over here. If you're interested in the chemical formula, we're not going to really go over that, but there it is in case you wanted to know what it was. Typical uses, like I just said, cutting, welding. Uh, I actually feel welding has kind of gone down a little bit because of TIG. Uh, they still do it. Usually when people start, they'll start with oxyfuel welding when they start to learn how to weld. But the main use here is cutting. It mixes with oxygen and produces a really hot flame, which I got down here for the main advantage is it's hot. It's the, one of the hottest gases that we use in the cutting industry. So uh, disadvantages, the main disadvantage with this is it's unstable under pressure. Um, it blows up. So yeah, if you have this leaking, it's going to explode, but any fuel gas is, gonna, is capable of blowing up. Um, it can be more expensive, but you can make that cost up in the fact that it gets stuff hotter faster and the fact that you can just be more efficient, right? I got four hours written down here. Anybody that knows that one of the main safety issues with an acetylene bottle is if it's laid on its side, you're supposed to tilt it up upright for at least four hours to let the acetone leak back down into the cylinder. Now I have a cut apart cylinder I'll show you here in a minute. It shows the inside of an acetylene cylinder. It's not hollow. It's got like a spongy format to it that um, houses an acetone. I got over here 275 PSI. That's the max safe pressure that acetylene can be stored under pressure in the in, dissolved in the acetone. So that acetone takes four hours for it to leak back down. Now that being said, if you had a bottle and was on the side for like five minutes, you probably don't have to wait four hours. But going by the book, you have to wait four hours for that acetone to leak back down into the bottle. So, uh, pressure. When you're actually torching with this, usually it's around five to 10 PSI. Uh, you can go up above 10 PSI, but then you're getting close to this 15 that I got you know, written here and crossed out. 15, you never want to go above 15. It becomes very unstable. So the 15 is the magic number to not go above. And on the regulators, usually it's, it's usually white or less of a red color, and then when you get to 15, it gets really red. I always say, if it's red, you're dead, so don't go above 15. And we'll show you an acetylene um, gauge right after we do the bottle that I got over here that's cut in half, so you can kind of see that 15, don't go above the 15 pressure. So, uh, keep going here. Storage. One of the main issues, again, we're talking safety, it's unstable under pressure. Um, confined space, you don't want to have these stored in a confined space so if they're leaking or if they get hot, they can possibly explode. Enclosed vehicles, enclosed buildings, uh, all that goes hand in hand. You want it in a well-ventilated area, uh, explosive environments, you don't want to have it, you know, somebody torching right behind where you're storing your, your fuel gases, right? So you don't want to have any of them in explosive environments. The burning temperatures, which I was talking about before, are settling right here at the top at uh, 5,612 degrees Fahrenheit. MAP gas is 5,396 degrees Fahrenheit. Propylene, 5,198 degrees. Propane, 5,108 degrees. Natural gas, they're using that now. It's 5,018 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see settling right up at the top. You really should know all of these gases. Uh, the main reason that they'll use these other four is because acetylene is unstable. That's why it's a safety issue. So people use these gases here. And like I said, the cost gets kind of um, made up because it heats up faster, right? So the main things to know about acetylene, definitely the safety issues. If you need to know the safety issues, the main one usually is don't go above 15. Uh, if you go above 15, you're just asking for problems. Also, make sure you stand these bottles upright. Otherwise, the acetone will leak out and it will ruin your hoses and your gauges and things like that. So what we're going to do now is go out in the lab and I'll show you the bottle that we have cut in half so you can see the inside of an acetylene tank. And also we will show you the uh, acetylene gauge so you can see where that 15 goes to extreme red and you know basically means don't go above 15. So do not go above 15 PSI if you're using acetylene. So this is an acetylene bottle that was cut in half and you can see that's the spongy material that soaks up the acetone that's on the inside. So what we'll do now is we'll go look at the, uh, the regulator on an acetylene bottle so you can see that, that 15 PSI mark. This is the first gauge we got here and you can see everything's white. Right up to 15 and then you can see it gets red. Red you're dead. 
found one other type. We'll take a look at that now. This is the other style um, gauge that you can get on an acetylene regulator. It's just right all over the place and then it gets really dark red at 15. I like the other one better that's white and then red because it's just more, it stands out more. Uh, that's all we got today. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV while we're out.